Now I'm up to C7, and C7 is a basic block with some applique. Now we've got, if you if, ignore the diamonds for just a minute, all the diamonds, just pretend they're not there. What we've got here is a square surrounded by a border. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna put a square, and then there's, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach these two sides into a row, make these into a row, and then make this block. Then I'm gonna come in and do this with each side. I'll do one side and then the opposite and then the other two. The only thing different about this is that this section here is not on the English paper piecing. The English paper piecing comes, they, they've made it so it goes directly to the edge. So if you're doing this from the book pattern, just know that uh, you're going to have to do this one first. If you were going to do it just exactly like it is here, if you're making your own patterns or something, you want to start with this one first. And then you're going to go to one, this one and this one at, this, at the next step. And then this one is the last one after you make this square. And then we're going to go through and applique all these diamonds on here. I have seen people exclude these because they're tiny or they didn't like the look or whatever. Nobody's going to know at the, end of the, at the end of the day that it's not in there. So make it your own. Do what you want to do. But for the purposes of this video, I will be attaching these. So we've got all my pieces laid out. I'm going to baste this opposite sides and then the opposite sides. The rectangles, I do the short sides first, then the long sides, and the same thing with the squares. What I'm going to do with the squares actually doesn't matter. I'm just going to do opposite sides and opposite sides and either. The triangles, I'm going to do the legs first and then the hypotenuse so that the tags are going to go towards the sashing. I'm assuming that that's not going to make these clash but once I get there, I'll see how it works out. Now you've got two sizes of diamonds. You got four of the, of the slightly larger ones and then eight small ones. When I base these, I'm gonna do them all the same. What I mean by that is I'm gonna do um, one, so I'm gonna start like, let's say I start with this one and then I do this one and then I do these. So whatever ones I start out, like if you look at them this way, Whatever ones, if I do this one first, I'm going to do this next, and then I'll come back and do these two. That's going to put the tags in a specific direction. I'm going to do all of these exactly the same so that if the when the tags come, they're going to be a lot easier to deal with because it's going to be the same technique every time. So I'm going to actually do these the same as this because when you're going to applique them, you're going to turn them under, but it's just a matter of being able to get them under there the right way. And I'm going to experiment with a new technique with this, with these diamonds and see how well it works out. But in the meantime, I'm going to get to assembling the center section. Okay, so I got this, all this center stuff basted. So I'm going to put them, put these together in a row, these together in a row, and then these together in a row. And then I can then put those rows together. But let me get the rows made first. So I've made these into rows, and now I'm going to go ahead and connect the rows so the center will be complete. Okay, so I got the center square assembled. I'm gonna, now I'm going to take the base these triangles and attach opposite sides. So I've attached these two outside triangles, and before I attach these other two, I need to add some applique. What I probably should have done, and I can always take these off, but I'm going to leave these on here. I'm going to add these diamonds to this section before I put these other sides on. This will give me some freedom of handling it a little easier just before it's a true square. Um, what I'll do is I'll find the center of this side of the triangle and line it up with this point, and then I can have something to line up the diamond to. I'm going to use a white mechanical pencil for that. And then I'll find the center of these um, these bars, find the center of the short side, and then draw a line that I can line up these points to as well. What I did with my triangles, or excuse me, my diamonds, I was trying to experiment a little bit. And what I did here is this is what you started with. Okay, so I, I basted these all the same way like this. 
And then instead of attaching this and then appliquing and tucking these corners as I went and stitched, I tucked them first. And I'm gonna try this and see if this is gonna be any better. So I've got four of these done up like this. And what you do, if I can find my thing, what you do is you take this and I did this all with the glue wet. And you take a fold right here. You this you push this back. It's hard to hard to do here. Push this back like that. And then you you know you glue it and then you push it back. And then you push this back the other way. So I don't know if you can see that. So this last little fold is this is this secondary back to a tertiary fold so you can see a little better so i did this made a made a tag folded it back at that line a little actually a little inside and then folded it again and i did all this with glue so then it forms the diamond before you even applique it on and so i think it's going to be a lot easier to attach and not have to worry about that tag and I glued this with, I was generous with the glue, so then I let it dry. Not that it takes very long for that glue to dry. But that way I can I can deal with it a little easier because it's so small. There's not a lot of places to put the tag. So I'm going to finish doing that with these. And, uh, with, and I'm, and I'm going to do that with these as well. These are the bigger ones. And then I can position everything and get it attached for applique. So I've got all of my diamonds attached. These diamonds here are a little smaller when they're put together end to end than the, than the rectangle. So I tried to center them and then space them appropriately. And then I got these um, on the line and then I centered them between the points best I can. I've, I've already appliqued these on and then I'm gonna just erase these little marks that are here. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and applique, this one's appliqued too. I'm gonna go ahead and applique the rest of these. Um, the nice thing about this is I don't have to tuck the tags, but because there's so much glue on the ends, you need a nice sharp needle and a nice way to push real hard with a thimble or something of that nature. So that's why I got my thimble and it really needs to be pushed in there. So let me get these attached. So I've got all my diamonds appliqued and I've got my staples removed. What I had an issue with, though, is when I'm appliquing these, what I did is I started, like, here, approximately here, and then I worked my way through this way and then back across and back around. But as you can see, some of these don't line up exactly, but they were way worse. So what I did is before I, before I tied my knot off, I, um, I came through with my needle and I went underneath the tip, and then I came in, and made like a figure eight. So I came in this way and came through this side and took this one and came in through this side. I did that a couple of times and then I pulled so that it would line this tip up a lot better because they were really bad. So I did that on all of these and it really, really helped out. So the next thing I'm gonna do is attach these two corners and we will move on. So I've attached the other two corners and now I have completed my C7 block.